Hello everybody, my name is Alan from CyberLab and today we're going to show another application called Paperless. This application is really useful if you have a lot of PDF files in your computer, principally if you have a workflow similar for mine. All my letters, everything that I receive, I scan it, throw the letter and leave my computer as a digital copy that I know that will last for longer. But the problem that I have, it's quite difficult to locate it and sometimes I don't have all the time to define the names and rename it. What normally I do, my print is connected to my network, so everything that is scanned will go for a share folder and will keep there. The only problem for it is everything go for that share folder and it starts to be scanned 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I want to find a file, I need to open PDF for PDF and try to locate. With these applications, change your life, you can only search the information PDF or some specific information and they will give for you. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're going to show in this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider to subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed and let's understand a little bit more about it. In this video, as I told, we're going to show an application that makes all your file system to be easy, principally with um, PDFs and other things. The name of this application is Paperless, and if you guys come here, they say that Paperless is open source managed online system to keep all paperless. And you're going to ask, okay, what's the difference to use this application in a normal share folder? Simple. As I told, in my case, I have a printer and I scan everything and go directly for a share folder. What sometimes I don't modify the name of the file. So it will be scan one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I want to find one specific scan, I need to go for each one, what take time, and sometimes will be not the best way. And in this case, this application allowed you to organize, index, create tags, create more information. But uh, this one don't make any difference for rename everything. What make a big or a huge difference is this OCR. Basically, they will read all this data, make this information searchable. It means that you can search the information, this PDF. You can have uh, some specific information, you can search it and will give uh, these words or this information that you're looking at in this, this, this PDF. And then you can check which one is better for you. Also, they can translate or can recognize over 100 languages. You can have more than one type of file, so we don't need it to be only PDF, can be Word, can be Excel and all this type of extensions. You have everything in a beautiful modern application, it's not so much difference, but what makes a lot of difference is this OCR. Other thing, you can set up some email processing, you can set up multiple users, you can automize, you can make everything to work in your way. And here they will give a lot of different screenshots, but I'm not interested for it. What interesting is to come for the real deal and try to understand. So in this case, this is my application. I have a total for documentation with total 1,800 and some characters. If I come here in documentation, I have a four at the moment. I have my barbecue installation. If I open here, they will give a little bit more about my barbecue, what the information that I have, how to do. Now I can select it. Let's say I want to choose search about handle. They will give this information for me. So let's show you handle. They will give both that I can open. I can open my barbecue or I can open my E5, my recorder. Here I have the name serial numbers, date that was created, some correspondence, some type of documentation, let's say that I want to write some type and the way that they will search it. Also, my storage, in this case, will be default. If I want to set a specific storage path, I need to select here, some targets, and one thing that's impressive, it's containment. So all this information that you have here, they create look like a wording, what you can only copy, you can search it. My meta will be all my metadata, what's the size, what's the information is there, the notes, if I want to do a note, history and permissions. This permission is good because you can set up, let's say, home users will be permission to see everything but not edit and others use will be permission for edit, view and continue on. What allowed also you to download 
And as I showed in the previous format, if I go search here, they will show all the application, all the information that have this specific. So if I come here, I can see my PDF as a PDF, or if I come here and click, I can see this information. And of course, they will show somewhere handle. Here will be the correspondent file, target, storage, email. You can set up email to make notification, at least access everything, will create a cop for everything. And here will be the rest of the configuration. So have in mind, and if you guys like it, this application, we can start to install. But first, before you start to install anything, you need to have Docker installed on your computer. Why need you have a Docker installed? Because otherwise, you will not run this application. Other thing, I like to use Portainer, so in this case, I will use Portainer to run this application. So if I come here, I will have my Portainer, and here I will create a new Portainer directly in stock. I'll come here and add here. The name of this stock will be library, and now I can look how to install it. But how can I install it? I will open directly my GitHub. Here in my GitHub, I have all this information, and here they will give a little bit overview of how this work. But what I'm key, I will come here in my Docker, and I will come here in my Compose. Here in my Compose, I have different files. If I want to directly install in the Docker Compose, I can come here and install Docker Compose. But in my case, as I told, I like to use Portainer. So we'll select Portainer option. In the Portainer option, they will give all the information. So we'll copy everything. And then I can come here, paste here, and start to edit it. So let's start from the top. They give some information. This specific step you're going to do in the next stage after finishing install. So they suggest you add a stack, put the name, deploy the stack, and you go for this specific file, connect, and select this create user. So in this way, let's try to understand what information they have. This one will be the broker, what they read, they give the name of broker, he start and let's stop, and the volume. I don't like to leave the volume here, because in the case that something happened, I don't have backup for my data. This reason that I always like to use my absolute path. So in my case, my absolute path will be this one, and I paste here, oops, I forgot to put the bar, so this will be my absolute path, remember, I'm using Synology NAS, so my absolute path will be my volume 1, my share folder docker, and my folder call paperless, remember to put everything for your case, if you use OpenMedia file, it will be a little bit different, so make sure that you put your absolute path, here will be exactly the same, they give me my volume, so I'll pass the volume that I want to save, here will be the information for my database, my Postgrade. Make sure that you use and pass to exchange to make sure that uh, you save your data. Here I will leave less stop, exactly the same. They will depend on these two applications to start. The port 8110, it's great because 8000, I think that I have another application to run it. And here will be all my volumes. So first one will be my data, my media and here where they will export it and where they will consume. So if you want to configure your printer, set your printer to go track in your consume folder. In this way, everything that's go to this consume will be collect, will be processed, and will go inside this paperless. What export will not do anything, but what is consumed, they will basically index it. Now I don't need to do any configuration here. And here I needed to change my PUID, my PJD. In my case, my UID will be 1026 and my JD will be 100. Make sure that you check your ID for your user that you're running. To do it, go in put, put ID and the name of the user and they will give the ID for this user. Anyway, have anything else that I need to worry? No, only let's remove these volumes because basically red configured these volumes before as a absolute path, so I don't need to create more volumes. Once that you set up it, what you can do, you can come here and put deployed stack. Once that is showing your screen healthy, it means that you can access it. You can come here, log, and they will give this information that's ready. So now what we can do, we can click here, and that we can access. But have a problem, we didn't define the user and password. As a standard, they will not have any use, any password, unless you create it. And if you come here, back, and come here in edit, 
they will explain how we need to do. So what we need to do is copy this specific information, go back here, and open this library, come here in console, connect, and that's uh, here you can create your user. Basically, we're gonna paste that specific information, put run, they'll take a little bit minutes, but basically it will ask your user, so we'll put Sauber Lab to ask my email address, so it'll be sauberlab at gmail.com. Put enter my password, and again my password. And now my user has been created successful. So now I can use this user Sauber Lab to login it, and I will set up my user and my password. Put sign. And now I can access it. I can come here and check my profile where I can change my password, put my name, create a API key. And here, if I put a start tour, they will give a little bit information what I need to do. I can end up it. Anytime that I want to do it again, I can come here in configuration and start tour again. And they will give me the same tour again. What we need to do? We need to start to upload information. So if I come here and paste now they start to upload information here in the bottom you can see what's the stage it will take some minutes yes it will take some minutes because they will process it file will try to understand how many data is in each file so wait a little bit anyway when we are waiting you can check those information so if i come here in correspondence you can set some permissions so now we need to wait a little bit if you come here in log they will give what is going on, so now they are trying to classify and configure these specific folders or these specific PDFs. This is the task, so one start and three it's in the queue. My users, I can create some users and group, in this way I will say home users and everyone it's inside this user or this group can have access to it. I can come here in settings to change the language, display formats, PDF browser and everything that you need, permissions, notifications, and send views. So now, one is a right process. If I come here, I have exactly the same information that I show you. I have my data, I have my content, my metadata, notification, history, permission. And if uh, I change anything, I can save or discard my change. So in this way, we arrive in the end of this video. I hope that you guys like this video. If you like this video and think that was interesting, please don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet, and see you next time. Bye.